let's take our little party uh, hurricane uh, lanterns and turn them into solar lanterns with these little spotlights that I have purchased. These are uh, the solar panel kind. So I've had a previous video of uh, showing all, 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 all of these little bits off and stuff like that. So let's apply it to the uh, oil lantern. So my initial thoughts were, was to uh, use this entire bracket and stuff like that. But upon uh, further inspection, it won't fit inside. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll pop out the uh, glass envelope here. That is uh, fragile, so we don't have to worry about breaking that. And looking up in there, I thought it would fit, but it don't fit. It's one of those situations where it's just a little bit too big. As you can see, it's kind of sticking down a little bit. So, uh, and I can see where it's hitting on the top here. Just a little bit too big. But, no matter. You'd have to fish the wires and stuff like that. So we're going to make this a very easy type of task on, the, on this particular one here. So... This little handle here is to uh, help you uh, pull up the chimney to take the glass out so you can uh, surface it. But in this indication, we don't need it. So we're going to pull it out of here. And these these guys are, are just, uh, they're a little bit heavier gauge than a, uh, a soda can. So not a lot of strength. You know, it's not like the real McCoys that are... Uh, a little bit not much heavier but they're a little heavier so so the way these guys are built how's this one built on top almost the same way so since it's nothing but folded tin in here and you're not going to be able to see very well in there but it's just folded over in there so we're going to take that part out so we can uh, grind a hole, and we're going to grind a hole because this can't be drilled because there's there's no support uh, to uh, support the tin. And since it's, it's all stamped metal, it's going to be very easy to uh, dent up and bend and distort and all that other good stuff. So I'm going to just go in here and uh, see if I can fold up these uh, little tabs. I got the one side folded up. Working on the other side. It's 2.43 p.m. Like that. And this is, should start coming up. So we'll pop that out. So that's that. So we'll discard that. We don't need that kind. So like I said, this is very easy to distort. So we can just uh, kind of do a little uh, paintless dent repair here. Just push it out from the backside and stuff like that. So. Now we can find the uh, center here, so we can use uh, a square here, kind of find the center. 
Not that it matters because we're going to be grinding the crap out of this. To make a hole. Something like that. Of course, if you got a little bit heavier duty oil lantern, you probably could just pop a hole in the top of this, but this is just. Like I said, a little bit thicker than uh, soda can tin or tin foil. So we're going to use our little rotary tool and grind a hole in it. And we'll grind it to fit the uh, light here, but we'll have to take the bracket off first. So we'll take the bracket off. Take our little bracket off and throw that in the box. And then we're gonna put our little tool away. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, cover off the LED here. Just a aluminum housing. And on this guy, you can kind of sort of change the optics. So when it's in this position, when this is uh, facing the LED, it's uh, your spot mode, but if you turn it around, it'll give you more of a uh, of a flood mode. And then we have our little uh, weather seal here for what it's worth. So for this guy, we need to take this out because we need to get this out. This little uh, gland here. So we're going to push the wire through. And we're going to de-solder the uh, LED board here. So we'll get the uh, soldering station booted up. And uh, we're gonna be soldering or desoldering on a piece of aluminum plate. So it's gonna take a lot of heat. So we're gonna put the station on nuclear and uh, take these little pads off. Because we're going to pull the wire out of the housing also. Like that. So we're going to pull our wire out. Set that off to the side. And we're going to take this off. Little gland. It's got a little weather seal here. Looks like this comes off. I don't know if that comes off to tighten up the gland. We'll find out in a minute. Not really. Probably just for show. Make it look like it's something more than it's not. <laughs> okay, so now... We need to grind a hole 
the same size as that uh, as this little bugger here so we can put that right on top of that and then feed our little housing up from below and then uh, tighten it down so uh actually that's almost the same it is the same width so i can basically probably cut that right out of there is the stamped cut is the same width as the uh, threads of the uh, gland here so that makes it easier so I can take uh, a little cutting wheel we'll cut that sucker right out of there So we'll center her up as best as we can. I'll just make a little mark. Cut on the inside of that. We're gonna cut it, cut it right off. hanging out? No? Fell through? Nice. Get out of my way. So we'll put this little, uh, for what it's worth, this little uh, O-ring back on. It's probably not really going to do much. No, not really. So when I'm done here, I'll probably, uh, more than likely, I'll just take some UV uh, resin and I'll fill it around the uh, nut here to uh, weather seal it against the uh, rain so I won't bother with that little o-ring and then uh, we'll just uh, stick this little guy up in here that it's kind of centered in there. Thank you. 
That looks pretty good. Okay. So now we can uh, put our little wire back down through the hole. And uh, reconnect the LED. We'll get some more wear out here. So we can have access. Access so we can put our little uh, LED board back on. And we'll put our wires back on. Okay, that establishes our connection again. So now uh, I'll put a little coating on there to uh, let that uh, weatherproof that. And then we can put it back up in the housing and put our little uh, lens back on. back up through.
Okay, that's that. Now we'll just put our lens back on. So since this is uh, recessed now, be a little bit of a chore. Get that back in there. We got most of it away tight. Now we need to uh, hold the housing. So since the housing is serrated, we can sort of use the uh, housing to uh, hold it while turning it. There's our little light back in. So as you can see, our uh, little light is back in there. Probably hard to see. There it is. So now, we can give it a little test and see how it's doing. We can get that out of the way. We'll put our little uh, envelope back on. And then we can turn some lights off and see what it looks like. And then we can talk about uh, supercharging it. So we'll turn that off. I'll turn this off. I'll turn these off. And then wait for the overhead lights to shut back off again. Then meanwhile, we can get my speed bump back in place. Collect our little wires. And then we can give it a little test. So on this uh, particular uh, solar panel, it's got uh, two modes. So a high, low, and an off. So you can call it a three mode if you want. But it's a two mode. So uh, now we'll uh, light it up on high. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Lights up the uh, bottom very well. And then we got the high. We got low. And then off. So that's that. Nice. So... Now that they, uh, the simple part is uh, is done, <laughs> we can uh, talk about the uh, supercharge. So we're going to supercharge these because even though this is a, a solar panel that was built to charge in 18650, we can make it better. We can do better. We will do better because I want these to be on all night. So even on the dreariest days of the winter time when there's not enough sun to uh, pump these up, because you're talking about a one watt LED in here. 
So that's going to draw quite a bit of power out of uh, 18650. That's a uh, 2 amp hour, I think it is. I'll take it back out and see what it is. Because this is a 5.5 uh, volt panel. And uh, the ones I got for supercharging are 6 volt. And I think these are... Almost two watts. I think they're two watt solar panels, but I got a three and a half watt plus a specialized uh, controller uh, for these. So uh, let's. Uh, how am I doing at that time? So I can turn this off and then we can talk on the main camera here. So we'll uh, shut that one down for a minute and then we'll talk about uh, supercharging it. So what I got for supercharging is I got some bits and then the uh, the main attraction here is the uh, 6 volt 3.5 watt uh, charger here so 6 volt compared to uh, 5 volt so yeah it's a little bit of a bigger solar panel so uh, It'll be able to draw a little bit more power from the uh, sun or whatever the light is available. So this is the uh, part of the uh, supercharging. And then based off my uh, a previous video of a uh, solar flagpole light that I converted over from nickel metal hydride to lithium ion. I use this very same controller. And this thing is designed for a six volt solar panel. There is some speculation it might work with a five and a half volt uh, solar panel, but it's, you're right on the border of, of not being in that margin of having it work correctly so uh, these things were designed to run on six volt solar panel and the way it's the way this thing is designed this thing is designed is that once this thing comes up not optimal voltage of the solar panel but once it starts getting like above the the battery voltage it starts sucking in the in the power so I guess you could call it it's got some MPPT that multi-point uh, power tracking where um, it tries to draw the maximum amount of amps out of the solar panel to go into charging the battery so that's the way this thing is designed and it works very well because even on the longest, darkest days of winter, uh, my flagpole light is always lit. It may not be lit uh, at the end of the night at full brightness, but it's still lit. So I know the top of that uh, solar panel is about 6 volts, maybe even more. So this little guy, he's got all the good stuff. So there's a couple of, and unfortunately there's no documentation on this of what all these little, there's because there's a bunch of little header pins to be hooked up and it's got, they're all marked uh, C plus D negative plus, but there's no documentation of how to, uh, what, what they're uh, supposed to be hooked up to. And when you go to uh, DIY more, you see there's no, uh, there's no documentation. It just gives you the board. So the way I wired mine is uh, I wired instead of the uh, the solar uh, controller with the automatic on off depending on the voltage of the solar panel and which deciphers when the lights come on and when they go off. Instead of having that battery connection hooked up, I hooked the battery this 
because this is going to do the majority of the charging for the battery. So it's going to charge this little flat pack and it's the same, very same flat pack that I bought for the uh, flagpole light. And this is, I think it's 500 milliamps an hour more than what's in here. I think this is a two, 2,000 milliamp battery in uh, 18650. So I got this guy, this uh, lithium uh, polymer, 2,500 milliamp. Very good battery. I had that light. It's still in operation a couple of years ago, and it's still running strong as of today. So very good pack. So my uh, plan is to wire this is to, of course, have the wire uh, battery connected to this. And this has also the connections for the solar. So around here, it's marked as power. So that would be connected to the solar panel. So this thing. And then I'll piggy uh, parallel wire uh, the solar connections to the uh, another uh, panel here. Another uh, charge on automatic on off board. And then the load of this thing will take the place of the battery uh, on this. So this is the other part. Since I'm not going to be using this I'm not going to waste it though. I'm going to repurpose these for something. I haven't figured it out what I want yet to to uh, use these on. So I'm thinking about since I have two of them, maybe wire them up in parallel. So I have the uh, more than enough capacity to do something with it. And I think it's going to be awesome. I, I haven't figured out what I want to use it for yet. So since I'm not using that and I don't have... Uh, I needed to get another, you know, automatic charging, automatic on off uh, board. I got these, these little guys from Amazon. These little, these are DIY, you know, like mason jar lights. You can make your own little solar uh, lights from whatever. So these got the same connections as what's in here, except for the uh, mode switch. But I don't care about the mode switch. I want these things on full brightness all the time. So, these things got connections for the battery. They got connections for the solar panel, and they got the connections for the uh, LED. And it's also got an optional if you want to put a switch, so you can have it on or off. You know, unfortunately, when it's off, it doesn't do any charging. So, that's the only downside of these things. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, of course. When I connect this up, this board will be dedicated to the battery charging. And then the load part of this panel will go into the battery of this controller. And then I'll wire up the solar connections in parallel. So one set of wires will go to the charge board and the other set will go to the uh, LED board here. Uh, to trick it so it does all the work of monitoring of when uh, it's too dark out to turn the lights on or when it's starting to get a light it turns the lights off so that's how I wired it in my flagpole it works good not a problem so like I said the uh, battery will be connected here uh, the solar will be connected here parallel lines to the solar input on this and then the uh, load of this, because what's a good thing about this is that this also has a live output. So anytime there's power going in from the solar panel, it's trying to power whatever it's connected to. So that's good. So that's the uh, circuitry of this little guy. And of course, the battery will be connected so we need to put it in something so I measured this battery of what it of its uh, length and width and I have these little boxes these little outdoor uh, project boxes so this little guy he will 
being like glued to the back of this. Something like that. And then these things have their own little bracket for uh, connection. So these things sort of go like that. So this gets mounted to your, uh, whatever you're mounting it to. And then there's a little screw for the uh, solar panel. So that fits perfectly, that. And then our little box here, it's all set up for being outside. So inside this little box, we got all the little jiggly bits for weatherproofing. So we got our little gasket that goes around the uh, cover here. So you have to fish it around the corner, uh, around the uh, cover there. And then we got these little weather glands. So these are bulkhead weather glands. So you got to pop a hole of wherever you want a gland. So more than likely for this setup, there's going to be a, a gland on one side and a gland on the other side. So coming in, going out. Very simple. So these little guys, <coughs> these are a 16 millimeter hull for the uh, bulkhead part of the uh, connection here and it's got its own little washer. So since I don't have a 16 millimeter drill bit, I got a, a 16 millimeter uh, Forstner bit. So this will drill a very nice clean and square hole for whatever, plastic, wood, that's what it's designed for. And then we'll uh, jam our wires through after we're done and then We'll jam our wires from our uh, solar panel here to, uh, of course, we'll have to uh, make a connection for the uh, lamps here. So what we'll be doing is we're going to be stealing the uh, wire out of this so I can use this little uh, weather pack connector. So we'll throw all them little bits back in. Well, before that... When I measured for the battery, I measured for the box. So this box is set up perfectly for this little battery. And it can only go in uh, one way. like so. Perfect fit. And then our little jiggly bits of controller and uh, automatic on off will just sort of live in there and be all happy. So that's that for that part. So for the uh, final little part to uh, wrap up this video, we need to uh, borrow our little cable here. So we'll take this, uh, take the back lid off. just opens right up so we can have access to the wires here and here's our little wires here so we'll desolder the uh, pigtail out of here so we can use that for uh, our uh, project here so we'll just uh, take these wires off And we'll pull our wire right out, and then we'll use it for our little 
weather pack here. So we can get the little weather pack out here and see if the wires fit. So these may or may not close tight enough to uh, crimp these uh, wires uh, for weatherproofing. I might have to uh, do a little further. Well, pretty close. They actually do squeeze down. They're a little loose though, but we can put some silicone in there or something like that. Or even backfill the uh, backside of it and uh, maybe we'll put some UV resin in there and cure it and that'll take care of the uh, from water intrusion. So that's pretty cool. So we got that. We got our little uh, lamp all converted over to uh, LED. And then uh, I got one more trick up my sleeve for these uh, for these uh, little lanterns. So what are these little guys? These are, yeah, 2,000 uh, milliamp hours. So 2,500, get a little bit more run time because I'll be able to achieve that because of the uh, little bit extra solar panel. So one more little uh, thing to uh, turbocharge these things and to supercharge these is uh, if you look at a path light, the bottom of the path light, you know, opposite of the LED, you'll notice a little silver, little uh, cone-shaped reflector in there. So I was looking at this thing, and I'm like, there's got to be some way, shape, or form that I can recreate that. So I have successfully done that. So I did a little research. And I went online and I did a Google search, uh, cone pattern template, something like that of that nature. And I got a website that has a plethora of stuff that you could use every day to help you out with measurements and this and that and blah, blah, blah. It's loaded. So I found, so when I Googled it, it gave me to that site and it gave me the calculator to make my own little cone reflector. So, I went back to the jungle site, and I got this, like, it's a 12 by 12, and these are acrylic uh, mirrors. So, these are uh, sticky back, and it's got the blue coating on it to uh, protect the finish while you're working on it. And you can cut these to size and form them and shape them, but they're, they're primarily meant to go, you know, stick it on a flat surface. So I made myself and I printed up and I calculated, calculated a pattern to give me about a 45 degree angle, a 45 degree cone to fit in this in the center of this thing. So like I said this is mirror so it's cuttable because it's ultra thin it's only a couple of mils thick. So it's like Little, it's probably about the same thickness as cardstock. So I calculated, I measured across the uh, base here of the, uh, of the globe. So it was like about two and three quarter or something like that. This particular one is about uh, two and a half. So they're a little bit up and down. So I went to the calculator and I typed in my, my diameter is uh, two and a half and I wanted a 45 degree angle. So I kept playing with the numbers until I got, I think it was like a little over an inch or something like that, inch and a quarter or inch, inch and an eighth or something like that. So that gave me the uh, nice little 45 degree cone shaped to uh, stick in the middle of these things. So you print it out on a, you know, eight and a half by 11 and you cut this little pattern out. So it gives you 
the option of even the little overlap that you can secure it with. So I don't know if it's going to focus on that. So it gives you the uh, overlapping joining tabs. So when you join this thing, it gives you a little cone. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. So since that stuff is adhesives, or you could glue it or something like that. So I can uh, temporarily just uh, glue this together, tape it together, just to uh, demonstrate what it will look like in there. Because right now, as it stands, all the light coming down from the uh, spotlight pretty much goes straight to the ground. But we want some light to go out toward the side. So I figured maybe 45 degree angle might do that. Or it might just shoot it back up in the air. I don't know. You can play with the angles depending on how you want to light it. So I figured 45 degrees, but some of the lights, some of the reflectors of the solar path lights, they got a pretty shallow one. So I said, we'll try it and see what happens. So you'll have to picture your mind being, this thing being uh, mirror reflective and stuff like that. So. All you got to do is just drop it in there and it'll cover, cover the wick. And as you can see, uh, that's my little reflector. It's, you know, a little over an inch tall, blah, blah, blah. And then you, like I said, you can, if you want it more flatter, you can, you can make it more flatter. Then we can stick our little globe back in there. And you can just imagine when that's lit up, what that will look like. So luckily I got another uh, panel here at it and uh, dismember here that we can uh, light up. So you can just imagine, uh, you know, like right now all the light is coming out, but when this is reflective, it's going to be going outward too. So you can kind of see that. So that's the... Uh, bits and pieces and discussion of the uh, supercharging of these so uh you'll have to stand by for the next video when i uh do it all so thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video and if you don't know already know uh you can also follow me on rubble or you can just hang out on youtube and subscribe so we'll see you on the next video bye bye